Welcome. Today we're going to look again at our Odroid cluster, specifically at the setup of the power supply. Now with our cluster we had actually set up the Odroids in pairs. Each pair of Odroids had its own power supply. Now when you purchase an Odroid you can purchase one of these power supplies from the Odroid website. This is a perfectly adequate little power supply, but you need one of these for each Odroid. Now, while this takes in the mains voltage and takes it out to a standard barrel jack, this is a 15 volt 4 amp power supply, delivering 60 watts. Now, I could have powered each individual Odroid in the cluster with one of these power supplies. But that would have meant four mains connections to the cluster. And I wanted to minimise the number of mains connections, possibly running all four Odroids off the one power supply. So obviously I would have needed a power supply that it could have delivered 60 watts to each Odroid at 4 amps, using 15 volts. So in order to achieve this, there were a number of things I needed to do. I needed first of all to locate a power supply capable of delivering that kind of voltage at that kind of ampage to all four Odroids. Now as you'll see in the cluster here, the power supply I eventually ended up going for was the HD Plex power supply. However, the HD Plex power supply, while this particular one is one of the older HD Plex models I had still in stock, is 160 watts. As each individual Odroid only pulls 60 watts, this power supply would have delivered enough wattage for two Odroids. However, it output 19 volts. So this is an AC to DC converter. Now, I then had to look to see what were the tolerances of the Odroid. Did it have to take 15 volts and 15 volts only? or would it accept as much as 19 volts? So I did a bit of checking on the Odroid forums and the specifications there did indicate that it could survive as much as 21 volts. Since the HD Plex power supply delivers 19, this was ideal. This particular HD Plex power supply is no longer produced. So I needed to look to see what the current power supplies they produce could actually deliver. And this is one with a current power supply. This is the 200 watt version. Now the 160 watt version can deliver 8.4 amps. As each of the Odroids will pull no more than 4 amps, this is quite adequate. The current 200 watt HT Plex power supply can deliver 10 amps. So again, we have a good safety margin in these. There is also a 400 watt power supply from HT Plex, which can deliver enough to run all four Odroids off the one power supply. But I decided to go for the smaller power supply and keep Odroids in pairs. So now that we'd managed to locate a power supply that would be adequate for our needs, the next challenge was then to wire them all up. The power supply is connected to the Odroid via this barrel jack cable, which you can purchase off the Odroid website. So that saves any hunt for that particular type of cable. So for the mains wiring, the HD Plex power supply does come with a main socket into which your mains cable will go. It then leads to a small connector here, which takes in your live, your neutral and your earth. And coming out of the power supply are four cables. Two grounds and two 19 volts. So these have to be connected to the barrel jack cable. I'm connecting these using these connectors. Now these connectors are actually rated at 10 amps. So they're more than adequate for our needs. These are located in the centre 
with the babble jack cable going in one side and the outputs from the power supply going in the other side. I was very careful to use a multimeter to determine which cable contained ground and which cable contained 19 volts to ensure that the power going into this battle jack was not reversed. And after having connected that up, before plugging it in to the Odroid, I made very sure with a multimeter that the outputs from the battle jack did indeed match exactly the outputs from the normal power supply. With the 200 watt power supply, things were slightly more complicated. While the cables coming out of the power supply on the 200 watt version were colour coded, there were in fact six cables coming out of the 200 watt version, and all of them are silver. So again, some very careful checking with a multimeter to make sure which cables were actually ground and which were 19 volts. As this outputs six cables, you can probably guess that this particular power supply could in theory connect to three different things. As it's a 200 watt power supply, and as each of the Odroids could draw up to 60 watts, in theory we could actually run three Odroids on the power supply. However, the ampage that this power supply can output is 10 amps. Each of the Odroids could in theory pull out 4 amps, so that would be putting our power supply in slight danger. So I'm only going to run two Odroids on each of these power supplies. Now to save cutting the cables that directly come out of the power supply, the power supply is actually shipped with one of these large connectors. The cables coming out of the power supply go to the connector and there's an additional connector which is designed to go to a small Pico style 24 pin power supply which goes in to a motherboard. These are purchased separately from HDPlex. So this allowed me to cut just the cables on this side and leave the cables to the main power supply intact. So having connected all of these up and checked that the voltage going to the barrel jacks was indeed what it should be, the next test was to power it up and see if a single Odroid would run on one of these power supplies without any issues. And this went well. The next task was to heavily load the Odroid with a large programming task that would push the processor to its limits and draw as much current from the power supply as we could. And the power supply delivered perfectly. Stage two was to hook up two Odroids to the one power supply and repeat the process. And again with this, we found no problems either with the 160 watt power supply or with the 200 watt power supply. So this has allowed us to create a small, fairly compact unit with two Odroid computers and one power supply. And arranging them in pairs allows us to stack as many as we can into available racks. Hopefully this short video has managed to fill in a few of the blanks for those of you who want to actually set up similar clusters. But that's it for today. Thank you for watching.